Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Schoology. We are going to work on the new assessment feature. It's a wonderful new feature that is available for every teacher now. Let's get started. Click Add, click Add Assessment. Name your quiz. And if you look at the due date, leave it empty. Submission, I will keep it enabled for now, but you keep it disabled because you don't want students to take it right now. And a password, if you want to uh, assign a password to it, I don't need it. Uh, and make it numeric so students can see their marks in number and not a grade. So let's go to setup and setup, put the instructions. These instructions will be seen by students before they start the test. You can just simply choose the type of heading, add an image from your local files. I've already got one here. Okay, it's there. Resize your image according to your desire by simply dragging from one of the corners. Okay, keep doing that. Keep doing that until it is according to your desire. You can just align center everything. Okay, uh, yes, my assessment has a time limit, 60 minutes. I don't want questions to be randomly ordered. Students can see possible points for each question. Flagging a question means students can flag them for a review later on. I don't need any calculator or a protractor. You can choose if you want. Highlighting text, yes, I want my students to be able to highlight. And notepad is very important. They can take notes during the quiz. Um, I would not allow them to see the results because it's a quiz. Click Save. OK, let's go to Questions. We're going to add text. First, text could be used to give a heading for any section. Maybe your quiz has different sections such as grammar, vocab, literature. So you can always use text to give headings to a section. Go ahead and type out whatever you find important for your section. Let's go ahead and add first question, our multiple choice question. So I've got some questions ready in Microsoft Word and I can copy them from Microsoft Word. Simply copy the questions and go back to Schoology, Control V to paste it. These are my options. I can simply drag and drop them just like that. Okay, last one. You can even type out your questions and the choices if you want. But if you already have them in Microsoft Word, you can always do that. Remove the choices you don't need. If you need more, you can always click Add, the plus option. And the layout, block layout is very nice. So I am going to choose the block layout. Now choose the answer as well by selecting uh, the correct answer. Number of columns, it depends if you wanted the choices to be in three columns or one column, it's up to you. So it looks pretty good. Preview, this is how it looks like. And as you select the correct answer, you can see that the uh, correct answer is chosen in 100% marks. So yeah, multiple choices done. Let's go ahead and add a true false question. All right, you can simply type out your question or copy it from any other resource. I've got it here. I'm going to just simply copy one. Well, the link, I'm going to remove it. I don't need the link. So copy it and let's paste it into Schoology Assessments and remove anything not needed. I'm going to remove these two lines over here. Okay, so my question, this is the answer, so I don't need it over here. It was only for reminder purposes, so I'm going to choose because the answer, the answer is true. So here in the correct answer setup, select the correct answer. Click Save. Pretty good, so it's done. 
and you can even add media to a question. So let's see how it could be done. Okay, this is YouTube. Click share, copy the link. Okay, so now I've got the link and let's go ahead and type, I mean, just go to the text field, click on that uh, media button, click on video because you're going to attach a video. Click option and paste the link that you've already copied so it's visible, so the link is working. Click OK. So the video player has been added. Let's preview. Looks really nice. So students can actually watch a video clip and then answer the questions. Click Save. We're done with this question. Let's add uh, an audio file from my local files, from local files on my PC. Click on the media button again, click audio player, click add, and click on the plus icon and browse for the audio file. My audio file is in a folder called Schoology and I can simply upload it here. It takes a bit, a bit of time to upload depending on the size of your audio file. Click OK and just tweak the design a little bit if you want. In minimal, students will not be able to seek the audio file. They will not be able to fast forward or rewind the audio file. If you don't want students to do that, then choose minimal. Click OK, and that's it, it's been added. Click preview to see if it's working. Yes, it's pretty good. So they can listen to in audio track and then answer the questions. Click save. We're done with attaching audio files. Let's create matching question. So again, you can simply type out your questions here. The prompts and the possible answers. I've got it in my Microsoft Word already. So let's just copy it, paste it here and you can drag and drop again. Speaker three, okay. And I've got the choices, the possible answers. All right, let's just go ahead and drop it here. Okay, C goes in the third one. Just remove the blank spaces here by going using the backspace. Remove the unwanted one. You can add an extra option just to make it a bit more challenging. You can add as many as you want. So D is the extra one. Let's go ahead and show my assessment that these are my answers. Okay, and D, as you know, will not be used Make sure that you click partial match. That means if students can just choose one or two correct, they, they can be awarded for those two correct answers. Okay, see that's how it works. And click edit question if you want, or click save if you're done. Change the points uh, because there are three matching uh, items so make it three so if a student is done with one they can get one mark or two or two marks so this is going to be very important so partial match make sure that you select the radio button partial match that means if a student uh, chooses one match incorrectly he gets one point let's go ahead and add an ordering question ordering means there will be different items in the list and they have to um, put it in correct order uh, according to a specific, specific requirement. So I've got this from uh, a play written by William Shakespeare, Macbeth. These are the events and students are supposed to uh, order it in the, in, in, in the order in which they happen in the play. You can add more options. 
I'm simply going to drag and drop them. Maybe I can even cut and paste. Control X to cut. And Control V to paste. <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and here show the correct ordering. Okay, you can just simply drag and drop it wherever you want. Okay, most of them are in correct order, but if you want to move them, um, somewhere else you can always drag and drop them okay let's just go ahead and simply drag and drop them so Macbeth and Banquo return victorious from the battle yes and then prediction about being Thane of Cawdor then being the King of Scotland so it's correct remember again the button layout is the best one and make sure that partial match is selected. So now you can see that students can simply drag and drop them. Click save when you're done. Excellent. Let's go ahead and add fill in the blank question. Now this is going to be very easy. select the question you have. I already have one over here. Now, uh, if you look at it, the dotted lines will not be recognized by the assessment. In order to make it a blank, you simply go to the R button, which is a response button. You create a response, a blank space. Or you can always, you know, use shift underscore. Click shift, keep it pressed, and click underscore to do the same. Okay, I've got two answers, two possible answers. So if somebody wrote 250 in numeric form, that is also correct. And if somebody wrote 250 in word form, that's also correct. Case sensitive could also be used if somebody is writing a proper noun and you want them to use proper capitalization, you can just select case sensitive. And as you can see, when you type out 250, it's correct. And 250 is also correct. So two possible answers. You can add uh, more if you want. Click Save and you're done. Let's go ahead and click sh Short Answer Question. So now we're going to work on a short answer. Remember, you're going to grade it manually because the system will not grade it because uh, you do not add any answer to it. You can add a rubric if you want. Okay, here's my question and look at this. I don't want students to write more than three words. I can always limit the number of words for the answer. You can always highlight it uh, so it stands out for, for the students and they know how many words they're supposed to write. So let's go ahead and see if we can limit the number of words for students. Simply write the number of the words. And always visible, students can see how many words they're supposed to write. Okay, text formatting, text formatting options for students. You can enable whatever options you want students to use. Let's go ahead and see if I write more than three words, what would happen here? So the answer is her son's graduation party. You see, I wrote four words and it will not allow me to submit. It wants me to make it three words. Click edit question. Let's add a rubric. Rubric is like a marking scheme or answer key. Click new. I'm going to create an answer key for this question only. Add a title, whatever you want. Okay, there's only one point for this question, so I'm going to remove the others. Okay, you can add more if you want. Just click on the plus sign. Okay, make this one zero. And let's write the correct answer here. The rubric is very easy to create and it's very helpful when you're grading this question. 
Again, you'll be grading this question manually, but the rubric will come up. Make sure that you don't you keep it unchecked. You don't want students to see the rubric because that's the answer key. Enable the formatting options for students. If you want them to use auto numbering, you can enable it just like this. You can see the students will see it like this and they can use bold, italic or numbering. Save and that's it. We're done with short answer. You can always print your assessment. Click on print assessment. Make sure that when you print the assessment, you do not make any more any further changes to the quiz. If you want the answer key, you can just check that box. Use five blanks for a short answer. Go ahead and click print. It's loading. OK, it looks pretty good and you can always print it out. Looks pretty neat. So that's it. Close it and click edit. You can always come back to edit and change the maximum points if you want. Make it out of 20 or 100, whatever you want. Okay, now you can see the message that is, it has already been printed. So if you make any changes right now, it will be uh, quite a different one than the one you printed earlier. So if you make changes, make sure you print it again. Okay, let's add an essay question. I want students to write an essay. And the maximum words they're going to use is 120. Simply copy it. And you can see it's so easy, copying from Word. And I would like to, um, let's say, go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm supposed to add an image, so click on image. You can always add an image from your local files. This is the article. So I save the article as an image file. So it looks pretty good. OK, students are not supposed to write more than 120, so I'm going to change the word limit to 120. Placeholder text, uh, you can leave instructions for the students. Let's say I'm going to write down, do not write more than 120 words. So 120 is max. They can write 100, 90, or even one word, but they cannot exceed 120. Preview, that's how it looks like. So the article looks really nice, and this is where students can type, and you can see that they can see instructions. And the word limit is also visible. OK, click Save. You want to preview your quiz, how it looks like for students. That's how it looks like, as you can see the instructions as well. OK, it's going to take a little time. OK, this is section one. You can always see the questions. And go full screen for a better view. Flagging question means that students can come back to it and give it another look. For reviewing purposes, flagging is very important. OK, the text looks really nice. Notepad is really important. Students can use Notepad during the quiz and take notes whenever they want. And remember, these notes are actually saved automatically. So even if they close the Notepad and open it again, the text is always there that they've written. So let's say they took notes during reading. Now they can copy the text and paste it in the answer space. Pretty nice, right? So this new assessment is wonderful for students. Let's go ahead and see some of the other features. Students can always change the background, size of the font. Looks really nice in purple. And they can always change it to white and font size. If they want a larger font, they can choose. That's all for now. Make sure you practice as much as possible.